and then I, and then he said, "So what's going on in your heart? What's what what is bothering you?" Da da da. I said, mm. "Yeah, this is the issue that I'm facing. Should I stay in ODPC or should I go back to my whole church?" And then he goes like, "What does the Lord really want you to do?" Like, I don't know. That's why I'm here <laughs> yeah. so that I could get prayed over by you, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the B Sides. I'm Eric, your host, and today for our guest we have Miss Wangin. Hi, Miss Wangin. Hello, everyone. How you this doing? is Wangin Bang. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you do this week? This week, yeah. um, you know, as a county employee, uh, we're already planning a 2024. Yeah. So, um, so we have this new initiative, which is like equity with outreach. So. Uh-huh. We're trying to bring, um, especially during the February, month of February, where there's a lunar holiday. So we're trying to um, bring people aware of what lunar holidays are. Mm-hmm. I mean, people do talk about it, but what is it? Mm-hmm. So actually, I'm planning a program for at the, one of the Fairfax County facility, which mm-hmm. is uh, it's going to be at the Cl- um, Twin Lake. Gotcha, gotcha. Coast. So what, that's something I've been planning. What's that one community event that you try to get people from CSB to go through that, every well, year? I've been doing for the last t- 17 years, which yeah. is the Colmore Community Day. Yes, yeah, Colmore, Colmore. Yeah. So that's where I really believe where community needs to get really connect mm-hmm. with our government agencies and nonprofit organizations where they may not know the resources. Sure. So that's why I start this event on 2000, I guess, six or five. You started it or you, I started wow, you started, okay. Did not yeah. know that. So yeah, what's we, the main purpose of it? So the Kumo area is a very diverse area. Yeah. Not only that, it's a very marginalized community. And mm. as an immigrant child, I know how much we need the resources, mm-hmm. but we don't know where to get it. Mm-hmm. So being a county employee, I thought, oh, we have so much resources in our area, and yet, if you if you don't speak the language, if you don't know the where to go, I thought maybe we should create a community day to bring yeah. all these nonprofit organization to government agents to provide resources to this marginalized and this community mm-hmm. of different you know nationality. So that's the way it started, two thousand five or two thousand six. Wow, it's almost twenty years now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but. It can't just stop by my me by myself. I, yeah. I, I have a lot of good connection with the supervisor's office to government agencies. So that's why we have a, a planning committee, and we began this uh, community there back in two thousand six, I think sure. two thousand five. Sure. How many attendees uh, come? Usually, by every year? Uh, five to six hundred. Five to six hundred. Wow. Okay. So and how, people, how, that's a lot to manage. Yeah. So people don't have uh, transportation, so people are walking because mm-hmm. that area is like Kumar, Bailey's Cross, and a lot of people does not have car. So they walk in to just you know, pick up the brochures about the food stamps, the children's activity, or other you know issues like immigrant laws to mm. like housing information. Or you know, most of them are really concerned about the health insurance. So mm-hmm. we provide those information out there gotcha. too. And then also we're trying to bring their cultural interest. So we have a lot of um, Peruvian people say, "Hey, we'd like to perform." So we bring the Peruvian dance group out at that community day, or I have Mexican like mariachi band. They will come oh, and do yeah. the you know performance. Yeah, we have people from um, Salvadorian people doing their stuff, Bolivian groups. Uh, even we have some Korean uh, youth came and did the orchestra like a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. it's something that got. It's even though it's not a really church work. Yeah, yeah. But it's sort of like my calling to really. Help the community where community is the most. Sure. So again, I think God put me in that place for some reason. I don't know how I got in there. I started with a, a social worker and then I become a, a, I guess, community outreach educator. Yeah, yeah. To bring that resource out to the marginalized and uh, diversity community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so talking about your work in mm-hmm. in the community, mm-hmm. yeah, I think knowing you, Wangin, for probably like 20 some mm-hmm. years now, I, I think... If anyone knows Ms. Wong, missions is always, mm-hmm. you know, the, the forefront of your mind. Mm-hmm. That's something that you really devoted a large portion of your life to, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask, what does missions mean to you personally? And kind of what inspired you to vote, to devote such a large portion of your life to, to missions? So I think last year was my, uh, 30 years of organizing a short term mission. Oh, wow. 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. And I didn't even know until I got there and I was like, oh my gosh. 
This is my 30 year, 1993, yes. Mm -hmm. 92, I'm sorry. So when I was 27, I think. Uh, and also it was in Mexico City. So mm. again, 30 years later, I was back in Mexico Bringing City. Bringing right back, yep. Yeah, it was like kind of wow, deja vu. So again, even this year, when I was looking at some of the volunteers and some of the staffs at their Pozo de Vida, I, I was like, it was just amazed to see how Mexicans are so serving their own community members, especially, you know, marginalized and, um, and like in red light districts and the safe house and all that. I remember back in 1992 when I was serving in Mexico City with the, some of the volunteers. I think they came because we are there, not because they love the law or anything like that. They just want to come and see this Asian, Korean American people coming in. They just want to see us there. And I think one day I was telling them, hey, guys, I'm leaving this place after three days later. Mm. But these are your group. These are your people. These are your people that you need to serve and love. And that was 30 years ago. I shared with those, some of the volunteers. And then 30 years later, how much God has blessed the people of Mexico and how Mexicans are really serving the people. And I was so blessed by that. And again, something I said in 30 years and then 30 years later, I'm seeing the results of what I said. And God is so faithful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to pr bring people to serve in that area. So yeah. how do I get into mission? I guess, um, I don't know. I, I think it was as being a, a youth pastor back in what, when I was 27, 28, that's something you do. Like in the summertime, they say, okay, Wang In, you need to prepare for a short term mission. And okay, I have never been to short term mission in my life. Okay, if I need to do it, then I guess I have to do it. So I remember being taught from some of the very traditional Korean chandosanimder or mm -hmm. the youth pastors. Was that CCPC still? No, or it was with the uh, Korean Evangelical Church in Ann and there. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. So, you know, they're very, 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 very disciplined. So one of the things they asked me was make sure all the members that have to come, which is early sunrise service. Mm -hmm. So I remember waking up all these kids, 5.30 in the morning, calling them and saying, okay, be at church by 6 o'clock. We're going to have, you know, sunrise service. And, I mean, it was like hardcore training. I mean, we had a fasting for a couple of nights. We went to one of the, you know, the prayer house, and uh, we did stay a couple of nights there to just prepare ourselves physically and spiritually. I don't know how I did it. Again, but that was sort of thing in that 30 some years ago, and that's mm -hmm. how we did that. And then after coming back from my first mission trip, and I thought, there's so many people are suffering. And coming back to Nova is more like, wow. I remember one of the kids, I think he was, she was 13 years old, and she's like, sure. you know what? I would not take 13 years to mission trip I was now. Mm. That was crazy. I don't know how I did it. But I took 12, 13 year old kids to wow, the mission field. That's tough, yeah. It, yeah. And then I was only adult. And then there I have 15 other kids. And I remember this one child, boy, she's 13. It was like, I don't understand why they're so hungry. Mm. Well, they call me Chando, which means a youth pastor. It's like, what do you mean by you don't understand? Like, I mean, you just open the refrigerator and there's food there. And then mm. when I took them to see that whole thing, it's like, oh, now I know. Mm why they're hungry all the time. Sure, sure. And they saw how people are living in just one one room with the chicken and pig, everybody coming in one night and then everybody sleeping in that one little squad looking place. And and then I think one of the girls like, now I understand why people are hungry because mm. they don't have it. So was that also your one of your first time seeing situations like that as well? Mm -hmm. So even though they were feeling in a similar way, do you think you also yes. took that so, as well? Yeah. Well, not exactly. Like I knew because you know, I'm older than they are, sure. so I know yeah. what they are. But I think when I they said, like, if they're hungry, they, you open the refrigerator, isn't that like? And then I said, well, let's see what mm. happened in that country, what happened in that place. So um, I remember there are 12 of us are going there. And then um, I, it was eye opening for the kids and also for myself too. Sure. Uh, and then coming back, and I think since then, I know I'm not called to be a mission, a lifetime mission, mm. but God gave me a gift of uh, mobilizing it and raising funds. I mean, I'm really good at that. And so um, I don't know. I mean, not because I'm really good at that, but somehow God just gave me that uh, sort of, I don't know, like opportunity that where I could go and get people and mobilize and encouraging people to mm. go. So... After that mission trip, I thought, okay, then I'll go back again. So from 19, 1992 to the 2000, I was going back every year from the same place. Um, 
So, um, and then, you know, I stopped. I came home from Texas to here and just a lot of things happened. But then again, the short term, like a mission never really left me. I think, uh, it's kind of a little bit of my great story is that, uh, when I was, uh, served, okay, I served as a youth pastor here in Nova and Philly for a couple of years. And right after my graduation from seminary, I was called to go to Texas, Houston. Hmm. So I was there from 1994 through 2000. So I was kind of burnt out. And I didn't want to do anything, so I came home. And I was telling God, I said, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to serve. I don't want to do any ministry. I don't want to even go back to my mom and dad's church. I mean, mm. when, they, when they saw me, I was here. Well, we need to get her to our church to serve. And I said, no. And my dad and my mom got really disappointed because, you mm. know, this is your home church. Right, right, yeah. No. I don't want to be part of anything. Right now, I'm physically, mentally, I'm really worn out. I've been doing for the last 10 years nonstop. Mm. And being a single woman, uh, not married, I was 36, 35, I guess. And then, like, not married. And just a lot of these things are just going through my head. And I said, no, I'm not going back to home church. And I'm just going to rest. And I remember telling my mom and dad, like, can I not just work at all for a whole year? Hmm. And I know I have to be depending upon you guys. Yeah, yeah. I was used pastor. There was nothing saved up. There was, yeah, you sure. know, <laughs> the only thing I have in my car, actually, I was able to ship it from Texas, Houston to here. That was it. And then, so my mom goes, okay, you know, you could rest, but can you come to church? I like, no, mom, what did I say? Hmm. I don't want to do anything. And then she was a little upset, but then I think she knew that what I was going through. So I think for... The 2001, uh, 2000, yeah, year 2000, I came to Nova, Nova area, and then I didn't go back to my mom's church, and then uh, I just want to go to a church that nobody knows me, hmm. Hmm. and that was KCPC. Hmm. Interesting, because I my family came to KCPC around 2002, so I didn't yeah, know 2000. that we. I just assumed you were you've been there for the entire time. No, I had the 2000, no idea. Year 2000, yeah. August, I was here, and then nobody knew me. Hmm. I went in, had a worship. Came that was in Vienna campus. Yeah, and I was doing for a couple of months, and then somebody saw me. I was like, "Why?" Like, I looked, and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> and then the KCPC youth pat. Oh, at the time there was a children pastor. She was like, "Oh, I didn't know you're back. Can you help us out?" Like, mm. oh no, I'm just resting. And then one of the uh, church members said, Wang Yin, we're having a Bible study. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to go worship and come back. I don't mm -hmm. want to do anything. So I was doing it for almost six, seven months like that. And then something hit me. Like, I guess kind of internally struggling. Like, what are you doing, Wang Yin? Like, you've been resting really well. What are you doing? And then, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? I've been burnt. I've been really having a hard time. Physically, mm -hmm. mentally, I am really not well to do anything. And then all of a sudden, somebody said, oh, we're having a discipleship training. And I'm like, went through all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been like, there, done that. <laughs> been done that. Like, I even went to seminary. Yeah. I don't want to, that's almost like a pride for heart. But I said, why not? So I signed up. And during the discipleship training, I think I'm beginning to get, like, really uh, see me as who I am. In God, and one day I was like just reading through something, and then said, it's "Physically, He showed me the hands, mm -hmm. and then Wang In, you are in my hands. You want to run away? You stay in my hands." Mm -hmm. And then I said, "I just broke down. I said, Lord, I've been hurt. I've been going through so much in my life that I didn't know what to do. But now on, whatever you want me to do, I'll be obedient." And then at that point, I said, "Okay, Lord, then I'm going to be commit to serve." Commit to come, going to the membership training, da da da, all that. And at the time, back in there, like they did have a mission team, and but somehow KCP was also stopping. Well, at the time, yes, what do we call it? I forgot. We we won't we won't Christ Central, something else. Was it just KCP's EM? Yes, you know? something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And then, and I was like serving. At the same time, I got hired as a FX County employee. Right. And then I I was getting this kind of you know how Koreans are like. They love going to one area doing big way. Like, oh, yeah, we're serving the homeless people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 
There's no follow up. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. continuous doing it.、Yep. Same thing. Mission trip. Oh, we're gonna go to like Burma. We're gonna go to China. Done and let's try another Out place. Yeah. So I almost like this is like more like a traveling, you know, having fun. Sure.、Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then I think they went to China. They went to Mexico. And then we had a missionary. We did send missionary to Mexico. Pastor Ike and Helen Yu. And I was like praying, like, oh, maybe I should think about going to short term mission to Mexico.、Mm. And I'm thinking maybe one of the pastor could lead it. And they are so busy and said, Wang In, we'll support you. I'm like, if you want to go, we're going to support you. And that was 2005, I believe. Okay, 2005、yeah. was my first mission to、uh, Mexico, northern part of Mexico. And, and then again, and that、uh, mission is again, I didn't have to do it, but something just triggers me. It's like, oh my God, there's something that I need to do. So that's why I started in 2005 with the KC, when I was at Christ Central,、uh, that I began 2005 and 2006, both in Pastor Ike's place. And then、uh, something happened, I think. 2006 and seven, oh no, 2006 we did that, and 2007 and 2008, church was going through some hard time, yeah, as、sure. you know. Yeah. <laughs> And I had a really issue with the, some of the pastors, and I thought, I'm not growing.、Mm. I think one thing that really, okay, it's also my pride for heart, got me really mad was、uh, my oldest、uh, missionary friend from Mexico. At, at that time, at the 2008, I, I believe, there's、uh, El Nino going through in Mexico City. Right, yep. Outside of Mexico, and they're having a really, really cold winter. Yeah. And、um, th- some of the people that I served back in 2000 are like suffering really bad. And, th- you know, he doesn't really send me a like,、uh, letter and he said, Do you think your church could help us out?、Mm. And I said, Yeah, let me find out.、Uh, what they're looking for was a blanket and、mm. winter clothes, like a winter jacket. It was like a couple hundred dollars, something like that. And then I did talk to the pastors and, Oh, no, I mean, they're not part of our mm. MTW. Mm. You know me. What? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I'm envisioning it right now. <laughs> I said, when people are hungry, they knock on your door, they、yeah. come and what do you do? You open the door and you feed them. I don't get it. Like, I was like, and then, like, you know, at that time, the church was going through a really hard time. So I don't、sure. think they have that funding and all that. I was like, I, I got so mad. I just, okay, never mind. And I started sending email to all my friends. And I was able to raise about $2,000.、Mm, just email. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then I just said, You know, I think at the time, the, the, my missionary friend name was a missionary rod and said, Missionary rod, this is all that I could raise funding, funding for you. And then I'm going to send it to you and do whatever. And he said he bought、uh, blankets and clothes for the kids. After that, I don't want to be here.、Mm. I left.、Mm. And then、uh, I went to ODPC.、Mm. The funny thing was, ODPC is very, very like a.、Uh, um, Community outreach sort of kind of mod、right. mode, which is like they serve every Saturday.、Uh, you know, the ODPC area, the Hundred Years are also very diverse and marginalized community. They have a clinic, they have like they feed,、uh, you know, lunch, a breakfast for every Saturday morning. I really love that actually. Like,、mm. oh, that's something for my, for my、uh, vision was like, I wanted something like this to happen in our Christ Central、sure. before yep. I left. But、yep. nobody was like, but when I went to ODPC, they are having that already. So, I was really like getting into it, involved with it. And then all of a sudden,、uh, they said, Oh, we're going to go to Peru for a mission trip.、Mm-hmm. I was like, Really? Then I'll sign up.、Mm-hmm. And again, this time I'm not leading it. Yeah, I'm just going to、yeah. follow. Guess what? <laughs> There was not a really good leadership.、Sure. So, I ended up t o o k over, even though I was not a member of it. And then I had to come up with all the Scheduling,、yeah. the quiet time, what we're going to do, and da da da. And then I'm thinking, Lord, I thought I was going to just follow them. What, what am I doing here? And、sure. Anyway, so I went to Peru. That was 2010.、Mm-hmm. That was、um, with the ODPC. After coming back, something was stirring my heart because I was not signing up with ODPC at all. I was still like going but serving,、sure. but I was not a member. And then All my friends from your mom and、mm-hmm. you know, Tammy,、mm-hmm. Miss Sunny Park, and all of like, we're moving into Santa Fe, Wang In. You should just come. You know, nothing is happening here.、Mm-hmm. You know, our holiday basket stopped and nobody's doing anything because he left. And da da da. I was like, 
I was kind of going through some turmoil, like, oh my God, my friend wants me to come back. So uh, the ODPC has a Thursday night prayer meeting. And this, ODP is a little bit charismatic than a CCPC. Sure. Yeah. So the Thursday prayer meeting is a really like mm-hmm. very, Bum-hum. very yep. spear fear. So one time they said, oh, there's a new pastor. Uh, there's a, they invite some pastor who has a power of prayer. So I was like, okay, Lord, you need to give me a really clear direction. Sure. If you answer this prayer, whether I stay in ODPC, then I'll have to go to the membership. But if you want me to go back to the CCPC, then you have to give me a clear direction. Mm-hmm. If I go back there, I cannot questioning, I cannot be angry at them. I have to be really right. obedient to your law. Yeah, yeah. So you need to give me that clear direction. So I went in Thursday, uh, the prayer, and the people are already coming and they already start praying and then, I really want to get prayed by that pastor, but the line was pretty long. And I think it, it was like we kept praying and praying and hoping, oh, by 9 o'clock, maybe my yeah, time will come. Actually. No, people are still praying. Yeah. 10 o'clock, I may get by still. And finally, 11 o'clock, I have to go to work next day, right? Yeah. 11 o'clock came. And then, I, and then he said, so what's going on in your heart? What's, what, what is bothering you? Da, da, da. I said, mm. yeah, this is the issue that I'm facing. Should I stay in ODPC or should I go back to my whole church? And then he goes like, what does the Lord really want you to do? Like, I don't know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So that I can get prayed over by you, right? And then he goes like, okay, let me pray for you. And he said, it was kind of repentance of prayer. Yeah. And I don't remember the next time. I was on the floor. Mm. I, I get this, as, what do you call this? Slayer of spirit. Sure. When he put the hands on me, I was on knocked down and I was like, I was overwhelmed with the spirit. I started crying, Lord, Lord, like, you know, forgive me for my own pridefulness. This, this mm. thing just came out of nowhere. And then I think, I I still love my church. Mm. I still love my uh, CCPC. Out of my rebellious heart, I left the church just because they didn't listen to me. And I think, it's time to repent and go back. Mm. So mm. that's why that uh, December of 2010, I came back. And that's when we had a holiday basket. That's sure, when we had yeah. a 50 basket. Mm-hmm. How many do we have now? We have 450. 450. Wow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it was, and then that, that permission was back in my mind. Mm-hmm. And 2011 is the you guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everybody. Yep. <laughs> you well, remember. No, I'm sorry. 2011 is with a small group. 2012 with the whole, we have over 30 people came to that mission trip. Mm-hmm. And again, as I'm looking back and forth, even though I left the church briefly and came back, but mission, whether it was a global mission or local mission, it's not that I wanted to do it. Somehow God just put me in that situation. I was simply obedient to his call mm. to do it. Even though my body is swung in, you're getting old. It's too tired to do. I even just coming back from the Mexico. Wow, I don't know how long I could do that, mm-hmm. you know. But again, if the Lord is calling me to do it, then I have to be obedient. Sure. And I have to be giving all my heart and my mind to serve Him. Gotcha. With that, yeah. yeah. So I noticed a common refrain in a lot of these stories is obedience to God, mm-hmm. right? And in all these times. When you nowadays, now that you've gone through all those times of, you know, struggling for obedience and then coming back, when you feel like you're being disobedient now, how do you think you're able to kind of write that in your own mind and, and kind of preparation, you know? You know, you know what? I think even when, we, even I am disobedient, mm-hmm. he is still faithful. Right. I think that is what, that I become obedient to it. If I feel like, oh my gosh, I did something wrong and I have a disobedience to God and he's not going to like it, then I'd be fearful and scared to run away. But knowing that I'm going to be constantly disobedient to him, it's, it's not like, sure. yeah, because I'm a broken human being. Right. But because of that promise, even though you are that person, mm. I'll be with you again. Right. I think that's the reason that I still stand and commit and then again and again, they come to him. Right. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things I always have to remind myself is there's nothing I could do to make 
God love me anymore, and there's nothing I could do mm-hmm. to make God mm-hmm. love me even less, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that what you've been saying is really just showcases that in mm-hmm. in, in its totality. But um, that's that's awesome, as long. I I really didn't even know all that of your mm-hmm. story, even though we've known each other for yeah. 20, 20 I mean, years now. Yeah. So again, like when I see a lot of young people, my heart is aching because I know what they're looking for is better life. I know they want it to be successful in everything. Because especially living in Nova area, you look at the, how other people live, and mm. sometimes they become their goal, finding a stable job, not just stable job, but also making good money, living in a nice area, doing all that. But again, it's not worth it when you're following Christ. Mm. And I think that's the reason that as I'm getting older these days, I really want to disciple young people to really love the Lord, by serving others because I think a lot of times long as I'm okay physically then I challenge mm. like long as I live in a good house I have a job I have a husband I have a wife I have kids sure then you don't look beyond that I, but then we are more than that I think we are create to worship and glorify him yes of course through the families and having you know families to make glorify God but it's more than that. So I think that's something that I really want to leave legacy to our younger generation saying, I went through it. I, I did live the life, but again, at the end is glory of God, mm-hmm. nothing else. Right. That in glory is our God's glory. So yeah, mm-hmm. so that's something that I really want to encourage and challenge our younger generation of our church members. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great to know that you really wouldn't have had that perspective if you didn't have those really big struggles, honestly, in your life. Mm-hmm. But now that you have, even though you can't just tell people, you know, they, oh, you should think this way because, you know, I've experienced this, mm-hmm. that you can walk with them mm-hmm. while they're experiencing things like that. And then as they come to probably similar realizations mm-hmm. and then, you know, maybe not end up exactly where you are mm-hmm. right now, but kind of helping guide them and, you know, walking alongside yeah. them. Mm-hmm. And I, I see you doing that with so many missions mm-hmm. partners, with mm-hmm. with the people who've gone with you on missions. And I'm sure they, whether maybe without consciously knowing it Mm -hmm. you know have thought that you know it's good to have a spiritual mentor who's been through a lot of Mm -hmm. the similar things in life right so with all these challenges that you have faced personally what are some challenges you face when preparing for missions specifically and these can be like a little bit more tangible you know it could be like money issues as you were saying earlier or yeah i'll be honest yes sometimes i get very stressed over for money Mm mm-hmm but I realized that when I look back for the last 30 years of my mission, short-term mission life, he never, I mean, he provides it. Right. Even if I worry and anxious about it, but in yet, I go back the same mode. I am kept saying, Wang, why are you doing this? He provides it. But <laughs> like, Lord, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Even this year, like, uh, you know, we have to have about 20 some thousand dollars to raise. And, you know, again, God provided it. It's like that, and I was like, he is amazing God. And um, my challenge is this. I think um, I want people to go out. Mm. To see. I think sometimes I have seen people going out with me. I want other people to go out and see how God is doing right. in this world. Because, and everybody thinks, because oh, I'm ministering to my family. Oh, I'm ministering to my friends. That's all good. That's good too. I'm not saying that's bad, but... But once you step out of your comfort zone and then see what God is doing, and that person is able to encounter, experience a God in mighty way. And that's something I'm struggling with that is like, he is waiting for you to really experience that. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, I really want next year, if we're going back, I really want to see some of the new people sure. to just come out of the little bit of comfort zone. And then just go and see. And he does provide mightily. Yeah. What are some ways you think that you would like to see CCPC grow in terms of our fulfilling our duty of missions? Because I'm going to be honest, like in the past 20 years, I think that's probably one of the areas we've struggled to grow in the most, you know, despite, you know, leadership changes and all these different things. It's, it's always remained an issue that we've wanted to push forward, but the personnel makes it hard, you know? So what are some ways we could combat that? Well, I don't want to be so critical about that, but I think it's the leadership. Mm. They have to live. They have to walk. Mm. They have to believe in it. Sure. 
because a lot of times when I see our leadership or our pastor staffs, um, mission is sort of like an extra curriculum for the church mm. activities. But mission is life. Right, yeah. And I, I think you have to live and breathe upon. I think that's the reason that I am where I am with my work. Uh, again, I am constantly seeing, even though we're living most upfront, most rich, and most expensive area that we're living in, but we still have over 5,000 homeless people living in this area. Sure. Half of them are children. We have a lot of refugees from Middle East, and I see those people constantly. And then, and, and through these people, I'm making a programs. I create a, a you know resources for them. So again, uh, when you don't go out of your comfort, you're not going to see it. Mm. But once you come out of that comfort zone, you could see it. Like even Lamb Center, we have a shelters for those men that are roaming around the Fairfax area. Even Second Street, you see a lot of teens are homeless. And um, WSCM is Western Fairfax Christian Ministries also with uh, providing uh, food and housing and utility, even health. So those things are constantly coming out, coming sure. at us. But <clears throat> if you're only looking at your families and your area, you're not going to be able to see it. What are some things we could do right now that are, you know, available opportunities that we need more assistance in? So it's there. It, we have planning center. We have that church sure. website. We put those things in there. But people don't really go in there unless... Our right. senior pastor say, hey, guys. <laughs> a big announcement. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. they will just go. But I do believe it's from top to down. Mm. And I believe that um, if our pastors, our elders are really missionary mind and really live out for that faith, mm -hmm. I think then it's going to start. Sure. Maybe that so will. Uh, that's so something that I right. really want to encourage. Our, yes, I know they are all have busy life. I know they all have their own ministry, but I feel like our church is more like inner ministry than outer mm, ministries. Right, right, that's yeah. something that I see it. For last yeah. 20 years, we've been always taking care of us, like in. Sure. But we need to start outside. Sure. And that's how we see the growth. And um, again, I, do, I am praying uh, for our church to revive, and I'm really praying for that. Uh, there has to be a time we cannot just live for ourselves. And that, that time will come. Mm -hmm. And again, that um, I think coming back from the, this year's Mexico mission trip, something really triggers me is that um, there's a, the ladies at the safe house, they pray 24 hours for the girls who are rescued. They call it intercessory prayers. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I pray. I pray for church. I pray for all that. And when we came back from the mission trip, we had some issue at youth. And some of the parents are really concerned about how youth and all that happened. And I'm thinking, you know, in back in Mexico City, there was a woman a praying for these girls 24-7. How come I am not praying for our youth? Mm -hmm. what, what, and I'm, I'm even going there to pray for these girls or rescue. But I didn't really understand to pray for our youth. I'm thinking, oh, they're okay. Their parents are okay. They are doing all okay. But spiritually, they are decaying. Spiritually, they are very rebellious. And I think they have thoughts of a suicidal thoughts. They are having very evil thoughts and rebellious hearts. And all these things happen because we're not praying for the mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. So something just triggered me and said, well, you need to start praying. So what I did was, maybe I should start intercessory pray for our youth. So during the service, I go to, there's a little room right next to Pastor Hughes' office, and I just go in there while they're having worship. I mean, start praying for our youth. Mm. And, then, uh, I, and then I heard something about our bridges having some problems too. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes together to serve, you know, everybody's their own agenda. And again, there's some relational problem. Always there's a lot of relational problem. <laughs> they don't talk to each other once it's here, once it's even at the church. And I realized that. It is our sinful nature that mm -hmm. we have not been really repent before the Lord. And I think we need to really pray and seek His guidance and healing mm -hmm. upon both youth, our bridges, even our others. So that's something that really God is really nudging my heart to pray these days. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think uh, that's definitely a lot of great places to start. And I, I think we are looking currently for missions pastors. So hopefully that'll alleviate some. But I, I agree. I think it does come from top down. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 you know, our pastors have, you know, they've done a good job at mm -hmm. some, at some level. And, and, we're always constantly reevaluating our, our own It's our a mission. Yeah. yeah. It, you, I mean, you're right. It's, I'm not saying they're not doing a good job. I'm just sure. saying it's, that it's a calling. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. calling that has to be the baseline for it. The mission is baseline. It's not like, I, I think I, I heard a lot of my friends say, oh, after I retire, I'll serve. But that my thing is this, if you don't serve right now, you're not going to be able to do it. Sure. Because it's not in your life. It's kind of like tithing. Because, yes. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the life. It's the life when you say, if it's now is the time, now is the time. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say, well, after my kids are grown up, then I'll be more free to do it. No, do it now with your kids. Sure. You could just go to Lamb Center with your kids. You could go to Second Story, serving the breakfast Saturday with your daughters and sons. It's out there. Mm -hmm. You just need to make your little sacrifice to do that. That's yeah. We're not willing to sacrifice that. Yeah. yeah, sounds like you're saying just do it. You know, yes. just just go for it. Yeah, if you have any inkling of a, a yeah, if Lord is nudging your heart right now, it. Yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until next five years. Don't yeah wait for a yeah. opportunity to come up. Maybe mm -hmm. make your own opportunity. That's because mm -hmm. that's kind of what you did, honestly, at mm -hmm. in some level. I mean, that's the reason that I've been doing it. I think I don't really take okay, Lord, I'm gonna do next year. I think just God just sent me something right here and said, okay, Wang, are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. And then I just, okay, Lord, I'm going to be obedient to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Ms. Wang, we've talked all this time about the challenges of missions mm -hmm. work and all these things. And while those are definitely at the forefront of our minds a lot of time, I'm sure you've grown, been able to grow a lot and just experience such joy in your missions or else you probably wouldn't have been able to yes. continue mm -hmm. doing up to this time. So I was wondering, do you have any kind of specific grace stories regarding missions where you've experienced that joy, where you've seen joy in other people and that's kind of reminded you of the gospel, um, you know, throughout these 25, 30 years mm -hmm. of you doing missions? I'm sure there's tons of memories in yeah, mind. But I think for me, anytime I see one of my team members, I just... In presence of the Lord, you could see it. And when they see at the work of God in those places, in their face, in their a way of their life, that manifests into it, it that just makes me really happy. It's just mm -hmm. like, um, especially uh, when young people like Tommy and Justin are the most faithful boys that who's been going with my mission for the last 10, 15 years. And Sadly, you know, Justin's not with us, uh, but at a different church, he's not yes. dead. <laughs> yes, not with us. Mean that means like not with us in the CCPC. <laughs> but Tommy has been really. Uh, inc I'm just seeing him growing in that way. Uh, just encourages me and then makes me really happy. And again, um, every mission is different, and yet every mission has a different uh, sense of um, how do you say this? Like. It, it, overall, it's the same, sure. but it's a different people with a different time and different opportunity where you see how God works in their life. And that makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Do you have a favorite mission trip that you remember? I think every mission trip. Is, there's you can't one, say every mission trip is long. One you must have one. Trip that I think it was a 2016 uh -huh. when we were on, um, we knew this is going to be our last with Peru. Mm -hmm. Uh we're at this uh, church in Loncadora. I think some of the uh, you know, old Pro Mission team probably know this is like in the mountain area. There's no tree. Very dusty. It's a very small church. It's in the dirt area. We were gathering around. We were encouraging the Peruvian brothers and sisters. And I remember um, Nathaniel Kim were breaking down mm -hmm. and he was crying and he was praying. That Image will never leave me. That little boy, well, now he's not a little boy anymore, but right. that his heart has, you know, yeah. Mm. That's something that God just showing to the Nathaniel's heart was really mm. amazing. And also uh, that I remember we were in front of over 2,000 people. They thought we were some kind of K-pop group, but we did the... <laughs> right, the like, Anna yeah. Kim was uh, <laughs> orchestrating some dance, uh, the praise dance. And we're at this stage, and we're just doing it in front of this over 2,000 people. Everyone's yelling and screaming like, 
oh, this is what you mean by the fighters, <laughs> you know? That, yeah, that was something that I could never forget at the 2016 Pro m i s s i o n Chief. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember, was Tommy on that trip? Yeah, I Tommy and Justin, they're yep, all yep, in it. Yep. We practiced that song and dance. Uh-huh. I remember Juno was also trying to get that mood into it. Like, yeah, that was crazy mission trip in 2016, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it must be good to remember all these good times. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, thanks for, thanks for sharing so much, Wang. I, yeah. I think um, just hearing your heart for missions is so in, inspiring and, and hopefully, you know, pushes the future generation, as you yeah. said, because it, it's not prayer. like something you can honestly continue doing for the next 30 no, years. No, 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 no. <laughs> Probably next five years, maybe. <laughs> five years? All right, well, we'll try to get replaced with that till then, but we'll see. But yeah, yeah. yeah thanks so much for sharing with Wong, and okay. I hope you had a good well, time. Thank you today. so much yeah. for inviting me. Yeah, but uh, thanks for everyone for listening, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>